Welcome back to Turkey Trip in 2023. This morning I left Colorado after getting my bird last night and I headed up to Nebraska. I was planning on going up into Nebraska to hunt, but they have filled their non-resident tag quota. So I'm in South Dakota. I will say that you need to plan about two weeks in advance to purchase your tag so that it can get to you in the mail. So that will make things a lot easier and you won't have to jump through so many hoops to get a tag in your pocket. So currently we have about a little over an hour, hour and 20 minutes of legal time. I've pretty much just got back in here. I, I just kind of drove down. I saw a hen up here behind me a, a quarter mile or so. Um, and so I'm just kind of hoping to maybe go down in here at about roost time, maybe get down in there just a little bit before roost time, do some glass and it's kind of open back in here and, uh, and check things out. So we're in South Dakota, we're up in the Black Hills. I've never hunted South Dakota. I'm not sure I've ever even been in South Dakota, but here we are. Let's see what we can get into. That hen was up in that direction. Quarter mile. Maybe, maybe as much as a half mile. A hen. That hen continued to move away from me and I never did elicit a gobble. So I crossed that opening and climbed up on a hill. I just heard a gobble. Sun's still up. It was out in that direction. I just crossed over this drainage. He's on the other side. He's on the side my car's on. He was to the right of the sun, so that puts him west, northwest of me. I don't think I've got enough time, enough legal time, to pursue him right now. I got a pretty good idea of the vicinity he's in. So we're just going to sit here and listen to him tonight. See if we can get a better location where he ends up. We've got a gobble after just being on the ground for 90 minutes. That's awesome. He's by the main road too. Main road's on the other side. That's crazy. Further away. I meant, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip back across and uh, try to get a better location on him. At least try to see what side of the road he's on. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I just heard him again. Good little ways off. We're gonna kinda just head in that direction. Just try to get a little better fix on him for the morning. If that was him, he seems further away. He might still be on the move. It's pretty light out still, even though it's past sunset. I don't need to know what trees it in in the morning, but I would like to have a better vicinity. I have a feeling I've been listening to two birds. One just gobbled from the direction I came, and one was way out that way. There's 
a bird out there. And a bird just gobbled over there. Alright, I'm gonna backtrack and see if I can't get on this other bird a little better. Holy crap, a bird just went off right here. Really close. I wonder if he's still on the ground. Because I just hit the box call from right over here. I probably need to back away a little more. Well, I know that dude is really close to this little meadow thing up here. I think I'm just going to keep creeping toward the car. I cheated this morning. It's getting a bit lighter out. It uh, it rained throughout the night, and it's supposed to be cloudy all day. It's heavy overcast right now, so we're not going to have a sunrise proper. It's just going to get a little brighter gray. I had one vehicle go past me this morning while I was getting ready. So I don't know how far back up this road they went, but I've got to go about 600 yards to get to where that, the vicinity of where that bird was. I'm going to start off with a little light calling as though the hens are just waking up. Then we'll pick up and do a little bit of yelping as the morning goes. So eventually I decide I'm going to give up on this guy that's right here because he's clearly not interested in talking. I'm wondering if the guy that drove by this morning boogered this guy up because he was pretty close to the road. The, the gobbler was pretty close to the road. And so the guy driving around and parking and getting out of the vehicle and all could have shut him up and sent him into the opposite direction. He could have messed him up this morning. So I'm kind of sulking about that a little bit as well as complaining about how modern cars can be very loud and have a very big footprint. Flashing lights, horns, and all kinds of noises just to get in and out of them and get them locked. They just make a loud, large footprint sometimes, but I, I don't know what they did. But they were pretty close to that bird. So I'm gonna head off toward that distant bird I heard last night and this morning. Pretty sure I just heard a gobble from down in this direction. It might not be real far. We just got some terrain in the way because it does drop. I'm going to park myself on top of this little hill I'm going up right here because it's kind of a knob that I should be able to hear a good ways around me in a nice 360 as well as down into that area where that guy was last night. I'm standing there, I'm taking off a layer because now I'm starting to move around. It's a little warmer than it was. And I'm standing on top of the hill and I get a gobble right at my 10 o'clock, 150 yards or so. So I just drop down. That's my hand signal for I got a gobble. I'm sitting there in the wide open. I don't know what we can see. We got fog and we got vegetation to work with.
This is the view down in front of me at my 12 o'clock. So that guy busted a gobble off to my left and he ends up working across my front pretty close, probably a hundred-ish yards or so, but I can't lay eyes on them and I can hear some hens once in a while. So as time goes by, they continue to drift across my front and now they're more at like my 2.30 or 3 o'clock and getting away from me. So I'm going to grab my stuff and drop off the back side of the hill and then come around to kind of my six o'clock and get to where I'm facing toward them. So as I do all that and get around the back side of the hill and call, I can get him to gobble sometimes and then sometimes he gobbles on his own. So as they got more and more faint, I decided I'm going to drop down into the creek and then parallel them get in front of them and I so I go down I go up a drainage and as I get to, kind of toward the top of that drainage and they're probably about 150 yards from me I realize now they're going back kind of the way they came so now I'm trying to follow them and keep up with them eventually I lose track of them trying to keep up with them as I was trying to get back in front of them try to do a different loop and get back in front of them again and I just lost them well, after messing with that joker for almost five hours, I started to try to do a loop around and see if I could maybe get in front of them again because they went quiet and they stopped gobbling at all. So I tried to do a loop around and uh, I ended up walking into two hens. So I decided I'm just gonna walk and call back to the car. And I climbed in the back, took a full nap, boots off, everything. Somewhere along that nap, I thought I heard a gobble. I don't know if one by but uh, I mean I was only I was less than a half mile from where they were so and they were kind of sort of coming this way anyway so I don't know but we're gonna do some real deal coffee not like that canned crap from this morning we're gonna make some real stuff now it's uh, almost three o'clock in the afternoon get a few things drying the Sun is actually trying to break a little bit it kind of heated the car up it was a little warm in there even though I got the windows down with these mesh screens you know I tell you what I needed that nap I didn't sleep very well Tuesday night probably because I was jazzed about getting that bird in Colorado and then last night everything just got late and late and I got up really early because the sun is up pretty darn early these days you start getting into mid and late May, the days are long and the nights are short. Leave these bad boys out to dry. They are soaked. Hopefully it doesn't rain while we're gone. So I went out, got into an area kind of where I lost them at, and just sat down for the evening. And I think I heard a faint gobble in the distance, but I couldn't even get a direction on it. But then that night, as things are starting to roost, we start getting into something. So I'm kind of making my way back toward the car, kind of, sort of. Got a couple birds gobbling. One's over here, not that far. One's over here at a good distance. My car's in that direction somewhere. So I'm trying to avoid this guy. Kind of get under him and get a better idea where he's at. over here there are four 
four to six birds. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get back to the car. That's at least two there, one there, and one maybe two in the distance this way. Holy crap, there are freaking birds everywhere. I just yelled, trying to get those birds to go. And another pair kicked off here. I feel like we've got one, two, two, and then we got a distant one or two over here. These guys are right here. I gotta back out. This should be quite the, uh, quite the morning. We're gonna slip over to the car. If we do anything with light tonight, it'll be Redlands. We'll be stealthy tonight and in the morning. We're having a hood tortilla tonight. We got a leftover hamburger patty with the uh, spicy guacamole and some wet boots. So I didn't use any white light that night. I didn't slam my car doors or anything. Real nice and easy. Pull them to and then just get them closed. So hopefully we got something going on in the morning because I've got at least four birds, maybe five on this ridge line. Hard to complain about going into a brand new state, never been before, and you're on birds right away. So I hope you join us on the next video. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down there, and as always, thanks for watching.